Good morning music fans everywhere. Uh, welcome to the channel. If this is the first time you've, you've uh, tuned in, um, welcome, big style. Uh, if you're already a subscriber, hi again. Good to see you. Today I'm going to be talking about XTC's, well it's almost the last hurrah of XTC to be fair. Um, we're going to be talking today about Apple Venus Volume 1. Um, yeah, a bit of a um, bittersweet album, this one. This is when Dave left XTC, although he has got some keyboard em embellishments on here. Um, but yeah, XTC are now down to Colin Moulding and Andy Partridge. Before I get into what the LP consists of, I'd just like to point out this beautiful, spot lacquered peacock's feather on the front. You can just about see it glimmering there. Beautiful touch. I bought this album when it came out, I think 1998, 99? Yeah, 1999. Their first for cooking vinyl. Now, I love this album. It's bittersweet. There are some there was things going on in uh, in Andy's life, Andy Partridge's life at the time, um, and they're very much reflected in the words. If you've not heard this album before, do yourself a favour and, and go and pick it up. Uh, it's extremely good. There's great songsmanship on there. The craftsmanship is fantastic. The lyrics are just great. Just just superb. It is one of my favourite XTC albums, I must admit. Now this one, when it was released, it came out as a, a gatefold. No Dave Gregory. We have Colin, bass player extraordinaire. And Andy Partridge. Colin Moulding and Andy Partridge. And I have to say, it's been noted many times elsewhere, but every single LP that XTC produced was better than the previous one. And I can think personally of only other, one other band that was like that, and that would have been the Beatles. Personally, again. And it's always subjective, but uh, I'm, a, I'm a big lover of XTC. And every album, from the debut right up until the one after this, which was Apple Venus Volume 2, Wasp's Star, um, is better than the last one. But this particular one, um, what does it consist of? Well, I'm not going to pick every single track out because they've all got their fantastic moments. I'm just going to pick out just, just a couple. Um, let me see now. I mean, Christ, if you've not heard this album, you need to listen to it. It's, it's actually not very good me explaining to you all the subtle details that this album has. It's just a fantastic musical experience. Um, a little bit more background to this album. Um, when they started the recording sessions for this, there were two flavours that were coming through. They had like orchestral tracks and standard electric instrumentation, guitar, drum, bass tracks. So they decided to split the sessions into two and all the orchestral type sort of meanderings and whatnot uh, got put out on this, this album. And the second album, the volume two, were all the standard electric guitar, bass, normal band sort of stuff. So the second album is a little bit more poppy, but this one has certainly got its moments. They explored sampling a little bit in this album um, the opening track, River of Orchids, has sampled raindrops uh, in a perfect sort of fluidity and a certain beat to them that, that when the track builds up, it all just adds. It, it's, it's amazing. I can't, I can't go on enough about this wonderful album. So, so now River of Orchids. This is the, uh, the sample raindrop beginning track. Great one to kick off the album. Strings come in and uh, it really takes you to another place. Then you have uh, 
like I said, I'm not, I'm not going to, I'm tempted to go right through every single track and, uh, you know, give you a dissection of each track, but I'm not going to do that. Um, if you want to explore, if this is a band you've never heard of and you want to explore something slightly different, but still in a musical, how we say, top 40 chart vein, um, that should seriously be in your collection. Uh, and before you buy, this is, you know, if you're new to XTC, before you buy, after this, before you buy Wasp Star, Apple Venus Volume 2, go back in their catalogue a little bit. Explore an album called Non Such, which is the, the last full band including Dave Gregory on guitar. Uh, it was the album preceding this one. Wow. Fantastic. If you want to go a little bit further back, check out Oranges and Lemons and go a bit further back to um, English Settlement, uh, Black Sea. Terrific. Terrific albums. So, I so say this album is now 21 years old, and this is the original copy which I bought when it came out. So, the, if it ever was a white coloured al album, it's now gone down to like a subtle cream in hue. Very nice. I'll just take this out. You have recording personnel. Also, I think the A could stand for Andy, but it's more than likely to, to be Ape, I think, which is Andy's imprint, even though this is on cooking vinyl. Oops, I can't quite get that right. That is an apple. same again. So the album went out of print fairly quickly because it was quite popular and uh, it wasn't reprinted for years. Right, let me just gently put this back into the anti-static bag which I purchased. There we go. Put that back in the sleeve. Yeah, like I was mentioning, it was out of print for years, and then I think a couple of years back, yeah, with 2018, Andy repressed it on the Ape, his own Ape imprint label. So it's still a very beautiful picture of a peacock feather but not the embossed beauty that that was. And it's also, did it upside down. Can you see the difference in color between this stark white and this creamy off-white now? So, Andy abandoned the gatefold cover. Rejig things out a little bit. And also, so for the first album, people were saying, the words are fantastic, where's the lyric sheet? You know, the first album didn't come with the lyric sheet. The first pressing, rather, sorry, didn't come with the lyric sheet. So for the second pressing, and he included a lyric sheet. Now, I remember at the time on the internet, very early days of the internet for me, to be fair, um, one of the fans printed out their own set of lyric sheets to copy out. So that's exactly what I did for my CD version. You know, printed it out on glossy paper, then stuck it together with a bit of PVA glue. This is worth the price of admission alone, to be honest. There we 
go, you do a bit of a sexy close up. Beautiful. Now you also get all the other eight releases which Andy was about to publish. There's still a few of these I've got to catch up on. But with English Settlement and Black Sea, I bought the box sets of those. And obviously, you know, Apple Venus Volume 1 and Volume 2. So if you can't quite make out what I'm saying, <clears throat> I do have a bit of a a bit of a speech problem, to be fair. Apple Venus Volume 2 was called Wasp Star. Uh, now, on the second... Oh, I am having trouble today, I do apologise. On the second pressing, or the second imprint, first pressing, the new one, Andy did it as a, I think, a 180 gram vinyl. It might have actually been 200 gram. No, I think so, it's a 180. Gently spin that around. Hope the camera picks up the titles. Which I don't think it's going to, it's, it's too bright in here, so I'm gonna, I'm going to give up doing that, but it's very pretty. Very nice indeed. And at some point I shall revisit that second album after this one, the second part of recording sessions, Apple Venus Volume 2, Wasp Star. That back in there. Now I'm very conscious uh, of not really going through all the titles with you because I'm gonna say to you, trust me on this one. If you're new to XDC, seek out the album and just indulge yourself. And I'm pretty sure you, you're gonna love it. You're gonna absolutely love it and it'll remain close to your heart for many a year. So, um, Thank you for watching my little preamble through XTC's second to last album. Um, after Wasp Star came out, Colin decided to, to quit. He finally had enough. Um, nobody really knows why he quit, but I gather there was stuff happening, especially with Andy. So, uh, yeah, unfortunately XTC called it a day. But they left behind a wonderful legacy of, of fantastic work. So, um, you know, explore their catalogue if you're a, a newbie to XTC and you won't be disappointed. What do they sound like? Like nothing you've ever heard before. The most finely crafted pop songs you've ever heard. Going back to their, their well, punk-ish new wave-ish beginnings. I hesitate to bracket them in the in the punk genre. Because, you know, they, they did something different. I mean, the, the lineup of the first album is different to uh, albums going forward before Dave Gregory joined. You, you had, um, oh Jesus, the word. you had Barry on keyboards. <laughs> he later became uh, the main man in Shriekback. So I do apologise, I am having a lot of issues today with remembering stuff and getting my words out, so I, I am so sorry, I do apologise. Uh, maybe that dementia is kicking in a little bit too early. But if you got this far, congratulations, thank you for watching, and I shall see you on the flip side. Bye for now.